Hello, and welcome to Conquering Finale. My name is Jason Lafredo, and today we are starting the Cooperating with Chords series of tutorial videos. And this is going to be quite an extensive series because there is a lot to cover in chords, uh, so bear with me with this one. But uh, for today, we're going to do some simple things uh, having to do with just simply entering chords by typing them into your score. And uh, so in the main tool palette, the chord tool is the one that looks like the C minor 7 thing here. Or is that C major 7 finale? I don't really know because you've got a capital M there and that's confusing. But uh, that's besides the point. That is the chord tool. And when we're uh, typing chords in Finale, we do need to check that the uh, in the chord menu that we do have manual input checked. There are several other ways to enter chords into Finale, including with MIDI and 1-2 and all staff analysis, which I'll get to at some point later in this series. But uh, for now, we just want to make sure that manual input is selected. And uh, with that selected and with the chord tool chosen, you do get your, uh, your crosshairs cursor with the arrow pointing in the direction towards uh, the staff that you're about to click in. Now chords can be placed on any measure. They can be placed on empty measures. They can be placed in measures with notes, slashes, rhythmic notation, doesn't matter. Uh, you can just click on a anywhere and get your cursor to appear uh, above that measure. And uh, once you have that cursor, entering a chord is really just a sim simple matter of typing. So if I type capital D, and I press spacebar to get to the next beat, um, I'll have a D chord there. Now we can also use uh, lowercase letters, and if I use, uh, if I type lowercase e, um, I can actually have a lowercase e chord. And I know that some people will use this to indicate minor chords, and in fact, Finale will recognize this as a minor chord as well. Uh, when you play these chords back, that will play back as a minor chord. Um, we can also use uh, sharps and flats in the root of the chord, so if I wanted to type F sharp, which would be the um, the hashtag symbol there for the millennials. Uh, uh, when you press spacebar, Finale will con uh, convert that hashtag <laughs> to the sharp symbol from the uh, music font. And the same thing with the flat symbol. So if I type E, capital E, lowercase b, Finale will recognize this not as a because it's the second character that I typed. Um, if, that, if I just type lowercase b, it would recognize that as the root. But because it's the second character, it's, it's going to recognize that as the flat symbol. So when I press space, you'll get the replacement flat symbol from the music font. All right. Uh, in addition, we can also very easily type in um, suffixes. So if I wanted a 7 chord, just type D, capital D, 7, and I'll get a 7 chord. I could type E9, etc., G13, all kinds of things. Uh, and uh, including minor chords, I should have showed you that. So E, M for minor, and that's the other way to do the minor chord. And uh, there's a couple other things that we can type, and uh, including the diminished symbol, the half diminished symbol, and the triangle for the major seven. Actually, a lot of people don't even know that you can do this uh, when you type in chords, so uh, you've got a leg up here. Uh, so to get the diminished circle for the, for the chord symbol, just type your root and then lowercase o, and when you press space, Finale will convert that to the diminished symbol, just like that. For the half diminished symbol, just type the root and then the percentage sign, which is Shift-5, and Finale will convert that to the half diminished circle, just like that. And then finally, for the triangle, uh, the keystroke for that is Option-Shift-Equals. And when you press the space bar, Finale will convert that nicely for uh, to the triangle. Now, those keystrokes, so it's O, uh, percentage sign and option shift equal. Those keystrokes will work for most of the chord suffix library. I'm going to get into this a little bit later, but with certain fonts, some of this, uh, some of these character replacements don't work exactly the same way. But in the default document in Finale with the Meister font and everything, uh, these will convert exactly just like this. So I'll talk about that a little bit later, but uh, just be aware that if you're not getting this um, result right away, it could be that you're using a uh, suffix library with a different font that won't allow you to do this, but I'll talk about that a little bit later. Now, with suffixes in Finale, Finale, um, basically Finale has a library of suffixes, which I'm going to show you momentarily. And when you type the suffix, Finale is basically replacing what you're typing with the, the suffix from the library, is sort of how that works. Um, the the reason I mention this is that because it does mean that you have to type the suffix in exactly as it appears uh, in the suffix library. So, for example, if I were to type D7 flat 9 uh, sharp 5, 
and press spacebar, Finale will recognize that suffix because it exists in the suffix library, and it will, of course, convert the, the B to the flat and the hashtag to the sharp uh, to give you that particular suffix. Uh, you know, there are suffixes that you may want to use that don't exist. Uh, for example, dsus exists in the default document, but dsus4 does not. Uh, so when you type something like this, you get dsus4 and press spacebar, Finale is going to tell you that the suffix doesn't exist, could not find suffix sus4. And it would ask you if you'd like to add it to the chord suffix library. Most of the time, you can just press yes, and everything will be fine. You'll get the chord suffix editor, which I'm going to talk uh, extensively about uh, much later. And uh, just click OK, and you'll get that dsus4. There are some cases where it's not so simple. For example, if I were to type d7 uh, sharp 5 parentheses flat 9, if I were to reverse that first chord like that and uh, press the space bar, it's going to ask me the same thing. This doesn't exist. Would you like to add it? Sure. And unfortunately, in some cases, it won't um, add it exactly correctly. If I click OK here, you're going to see that Finale does not convert the hashtag to the sharp symbol or the B to the flat symbol. So you're going to need to do a little bit more work in that regard, which I will discuss a little bit more when we talk about the chord suffix editor. All right, so just be aware that um, sometimes it's uh, simple to add a, a new suffix like the sus4, but sometimes it, it's not as simple, so you'll, you'll need to uh, dig a little bit deeper into that. And so let's talk about the chord suffix library itself. The, the easiest way to get to the library just to see what's there is to type the root and then type colon and then type zero and then press space or return actually will um, will we'll get you there. So type return and it will pull up the chord suffix selection dialog box. Now this these are all of the suffixes that exist in the uh, default document and uh, certain different styles of uh, the, the documents that uh, Finale comes with will have different types of suffixes with different fonts and everything. But this is the uh, the, the Times New Roman suffix uh, set with uh, the Maestro font uh, um, music character set. So uh, these last two are are the, the the two that I just added. So you'll see that you get 177. Uh, different suffixes, suffixes that are available. And you can see, you know, exactly what there is. There's different versions of minor with spelled with an M or an MI. Um, there's all kinds of things with sevens and nines and flats and pluses and, and diminished sevens and all kinds of things, including some complicated ones like this, which is, what is that, plus add sharp nine, add flat nine. That's an extensive chord. So, uh, but again, the important thing is that it, as you're typing into the score, you do have to type these in the, the exact order uh, uh, that you see them here in order to get the, uh, the suffix to appear correctly. However, if you don't know uh, exactly how it's typed, um, you can do exactly what I did. So I just typed D uh, colon zero, and then you can go in here and just select one. So I can select this crazy one, major seven, add sharp 11 and press select, and Finale will convert that uh, you know, colon zero to that um, particular suffix. Now, the other thing about this is that if you happen to know the number of the suffix, so let's just go back there, colon zero, to pull this up. Um, for example, this one here, major seven, add nine, uh, the ID here in the top left corner is number eight, right? Let me just cancel out of that. So instead of typing D colon zero and then selecting it, I could type D colon, oops, colon eight, and you'll see that it will uh, use that particular, that eighth suffix effectively. Um, so again, there's a lot of suffixes here, so it's it would be crazy to memorize this, but if there's certain long ones that you use a lot, and, uh, you know, instead of typing all of that all the time, you just sort of memorized uh, a few select positions, uh, like 70 or something. If you really use the minor 7, add 13 a lot in a particular file, you just memorize the 70, and then you can type uh, uh, colon 70. Um, uh, I actually know some people that will actually work like this. They have a, a whole list of all their suffixes with, an, uh, with the corresponding number, so they can reference that and then just use the, uh, the colon to, to get the appropriate uh, chord suffix. So that's actually one way to do it as well. Now, the other simple thing we can do with chords and finale is uh, alternate bass notes. And there's actually a couple different ways, a few different ways to do this. So uh, the, the easiest way is to just press uh, or to type the root first and then press the slash key and then choose an alternate bass note. So I could do F sharp here. So D over F sharp. And when you press space, you'll get your D over F sharp. Uh, you can also do 
uh, lowercase letters in the uh, alternate base as well, which I don't necessarily understand what that means per se, but uh, Finale allows you to do that. Um, and then, uh, so that's the slash key, but there's there's two other styles that you can use uh, to, to get that alternate base. So if you type, instead of the slash key, if you type the um, uh, underscore key, just like that, and then your alternate base note, you'll get the, the chord over top of the alternate base note like that, right? S versus the slash, which looks like that. And then the f the, there's a third one that you can do, which is D. And this is the, I don't know what this key is called. It's the upright slash, I guess, but it's shift um, and that, uh, that vertical slash uh, key right there. And then type the uh, alternate base note. And that will give you the, the sort of uh, offset slashed version of that that looks like that. All right, so there's actually three different ways that you can do uh, alternate base notes. And of course, you know, you can use suffixes with this as well. So if I wanted to, I could do D9. Um, uh, vertical slash F sharp, something like that. So we can get something that looks like that, all right? The other thing that's worth mentioning here with both the alternate bass notes and the suffixes actually is that you can uh, type the suffix or the alternate bass without the root chord. Um, so you could do something like this in my guitar two part here, I could type D and then on the next beat, just type the slash over F sharp and finale will allow you to actually have that uh, that that uh, alternate bass without the the chord root. You can do the same thing with suffixes. So I could just simply type seven flat nine, for example, and finale will show that suffix without the root. And of course, you could do um, the suffix and the root without the the um, or the suffix and the alternate bass without the root. So I could do seven over F sharp and get something that looks like that. So, you know, it is possible to um, to type some of these chords in uh, without the, the root, so. Now, so far, I've been entering chords on a blank staff, and uh, you may have noticed uh, what happens when I, you know, enter a chord and press spacebar is that it goes to the next beat, uh, and then it goes to the third beat, and then it goes to the fourth beat. And those are your only options when you have a blank measure in 4-4 four, four time. Now, when you enter notes uh, or when you enter chords um, where there are rhythms available, like this uh, guitar one part here, I'm going to enter some chords here, uh, D. When I press the space bar, it will take me to the next available rhythm. So you can see that now the chord um, uh, cursor is over the, the, the eighth notes or the end of one right there. So now we can type a new chord on the end of one. And when you do have syncopated rhythms like this, pressing spacebar will take you to the, uh, the, the hard beat itself as well. So in this case, uh, you know, the first space takes me to the end of one, and the next space takes me to the second beat. And then another space will take me to, uh, to, the, to the next rhythm that's available. So here we can type another chord. I believe this is D over A. And again, it will take me to the next hard beat, which is part beat three, and then the next rhythm. And then we can type another here, note uh, chord here, et cetera. So in this particular bar, the space bar will essentially move me every eighth note, right? Um, again, so you know, if you have a rhythm available, and this will also work, by the way, with uh, rhythmic notation, it'll work the same way. D space takes me to the next rhythm, to the next beat, to the next rhythm, et cetera. Um, so whenever you have rhythms in the measure, uh, the space bar will take you to the, to the next available rhythm or the next available beat. Um, with empty measures or with slash measures, the space bar is always going to take you to the next beat only, right? You can't get to the eighth notes uh, doing this. All right. What's interesting, oh, uh, before I go on with that, I should have mentioned that um, if you enter a chord here, for example, um, shift space will take you backwards, by the way. All right. And also one more thing, if you enter a chord in the first measure here, tab will take you to, to all, all the way to the next measure and shift tab will take you back to the uh, previous measure. So uh, advancing and, and going backwards is uh, space bar for the next available rhythm or beat, tab for the next uh, uh, measure and then shift to go backwards in both of those uh, both of those amounts. Okay, what's interesting is that um, when typing chords like this with the space bar, it handles different meters differently, and you know in some cases it depends on how the meter is set up. So in this example, if you had watched any of my um, uh, time signature 
uh, videos, you know that there's a difference between 6-8 uh, uh, as two dotted quarter notes versus 6-8 versus six individual eighth notes. And you can even see the slashes are different in this particular case. Well, with the chord tool in these uh, compound meters like this, uh, it w the space bar will actually take you to the next large beat like that. So you can see that one space will take you to, to the next uh, full beat there. However, if, you, if you're doing 6-8 six eight as eight, six uh, individual eighth notes, every uh, space will take you to the next uh, eighth note. So just be aware that um, it works like that. What's weird about this, and I, I did some uh, digging around for this, is that um, in more complex meters, like this one here where I have this composite 10-8, and in the time signature tool, I have this set up as uh, you know, two dotted quarter notes followed by two quarter notes, is that the space bar for the chord input will indeed take you to every single uh, eighth note, which is kind of annoying. I feel like it should actually take you to the to the uh, to the beats that you have set up here. Uh, in this particular case, I have the ten eight set up uh, with four large beats, and but it doesn't quite work like that. So, uh, in compound meters, it will take you from one uh, dotted quarter to the next, but in for some reason in composite meters, when you set them up like this, it will not. So, just be aware that the, that's sort of a, a weird thing about um, spacing through to get to certain chords. And then one last thing I do want to mention, actually a couple last things I do want to mention. If you have existing chords here and you uh, click in the measure where a chord exists, it will actually highlight that. So you can do a couple things. You can either just delete it directly or you can highlight it and just completely type over it if you need a new chord there. So uh, that's, that's uh, how that works. And then finally, the last thing I want to mention is that it doesn't make a lot of sense in this particular key, but in some keys, uh, you may want something like a C flat chord. And if you just type a C flat chord, Finale is going to most of the time convert that to B major. You just saw me type C flat, and uh, it converted it to B major, which is not what I wanted. Just there it is again. Uh, there's a easy fix to this, which I wanted to mention right off the bat because I know this uh, people run into this problem sometimes, is go to the chord menu. There is an option here for simplify spelling. If you uncheck that, then it will convert those chords back to the way you originally typed them. So what Finale is doing is it's saying, yeah, I don't think you really want a C flat chord, so I'm going to make that a B chord for you out of courtesy. But, um, you know, sometimes you don't necessarily want to do that. So uh, that simplify spelling option is checked by default in the default document, but you can always uh, uncheck it if you want um, to get yourself some some uh, C flat chords or, or something similar to that. All right, so I think that covers it. That uh, you know that's pretty much how you type chords into Finale. Um, there's a lot to know about that, but hopefully this helps. And uh, so yeah, we're well on our way to uh, <laughs> cooperating with chords today. All right, so thanks for watching, and uh, come back. We've got a lot more videos to do with chords, and uh, I'll see you soon on those.